Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiryFantasyArt.com. Uh, today I am drawing something that is a bit gory, so if you do have a sensitive stomach or constitution, I do recommend that you skip this video. Um, it is a style I wanted to try out because I don't normally draw uh, horrendously gory stuff like zombies or, uh, in this case, a character whose skin is actually peeled off his ribcage. Uh, so... I wanted to see how far I could actually take this style, because uh, it isn't something I'm familiar with, but it is something I wanted to experiment for a while. Uh, so before I even started this image, I actually went through quite a few thumbnails, both traditionally and digitally, um, and I actually started recording some of those so that maybe in a future video, once I get enough to actually make a full length video, then I'll compile it so you guys could actually see how I do um, a series of thumbnails, especially for a pose that's difficult. Now in this case, because it is, once again, something um, that I'm not familiar with, I did want to do quite a bit of research. Uh, so, for me, the best place to go for researching uh, this type of stuff is actually DeviantArt. So I logged on to my DeviantArt account and uh, just looked at some of the groups that actually uh, do cater to people who enjoy um, some gory or dark art in general. Uh, so from that reference, uh, I was able to get this concept for an idea. And like I said, though, it's not something I'm familiar with, so uh, it did take me about one or two days just looking at reference. I didn't draw anything except for posing on those two days, uh, just to get a general idea of what that entailed as a drawing. Uh, now, I did want to uh, like show the weight of the character specifically in this, because uh, he is being weighed down by those chains. Um, he's been tortured in this case, so he is literally a tortured soul. So, because of this, I did want to show how that pain actually affected his physique in general. Not only just physically, but how it had changed his posture. So he's very rigid in posture, but he's also weighed down by everything he's gone through. Uh, so those are a couple things I take into consideration when I'm trying to figure out both a pose and uh, general character design, is try to look at the overall theme and how that would affect the character. Uh, in this case, it does affect the character significantly, so both the background is really dark, um, a lot of the colors... Uh, are from a very specific color palette, uh, a lot of reds, uh, yellows, uh, green to balance it out. All those colors are used to help emphasize the fact that this is not supposed to be a pleasant atmosphere. It's supposed to be a very gloomy atmosphere. Um, now, you don't see the colors until later on in this video, but those are everything that I did take into account before actually painting or coloring the character. Now, as you've seen me do before, I do block out the general shapes, uh, and I do everything in grayscale first. Uh, Time-wise, it just saves me a lot of time, uh, and it makes changes a lot easier as well. Because if I ever have to make changes color palette-wise, I can do so easily. Uh, once again, I'm just uh, changing the opacity of my brush as I'm working. Uh, there is uh, pros and cons to that. I explained so some of the pros and cons to that, especially for printing um, in my past video. So I won't go over that again this time. But uh, this process does cause some issues with the background. Uh, luckily, in this case, though, most of those issues actually help the overall image. Uh, sometimes, however, because I'm just changing the opacity, the background color does show through. And sometimes that's not what I want, because uh, that does change it significantly, the overall uh, shadows that I've added for the muscle and the anatomy in general. Uh, but in this case, it didn't affect the character, so I didn't have to make any changes. Uh, if I do come across that, what I sometimes do is I'll mask out some of the background layer. Uh, especially if there's colors on that specific layer. Uh, so it avoids me from having to redraw the whole image, but it also gives me the flexibility to do changes as I need it in case I do decide to move the character later on. Now that wasn't the case for this, um, but uh, it was something I had to keep in mind. 
Now, uh, that material that you see that's actually attached to his arm, it's actually the skin from his rib cage. Uh, once again, I did mention before this video started that there is some gore to this drawing. So if you're sensitive, just turn away, especially once they start coloring it, because then it becomes more visible and you can definitely see it more. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, I did look at a lot of reference for this. Um, I was influenced heavily by uh, some of the darker art that I did find on Demon Art specifically. Um, I was actually lucky enough because I did join a couple of groups uh, that were catered to that type of art that I was actually invited to a specific group that actually allowed me to reference um, some more of these types of imagery. Now I did notice that most of the, the styles or most of the images in that style did have very textured brushes. Uh, so I did lean more heavily towards textured brushes, especially for the background and adding additional detail to the character. Um, it did give it more of a gritty look, which is complementary to my normal style. Uh, so luckily enough, I had some of those brushes already in place. Uh, now, brushes really don't make a whole lot of difference. They do cut down the overall time, but they aren't necessary. So if you are just starting out drawing-wise to doing uh, concept art in general or just illustrations for fun, I wouldn't concentrate too much on what type of brushes you need to use. Uh, pretty much the entire character itself, minus the background, uh, was actually done with, uh, the vast majority of it was done with a normal soft brush that comes as a default in Photoshop. Uh, so once again, the brush does not make a huge difference. It can cut down your time depending on what type of brush you have, uh, but it's normally better to learn how to actually use the default brushes before you actually start using specialty brushes. Um, like I said uh, before, it doesn't really matter what medium uh, you use as long as you understand how that medium affects the end result. And this works for both digital images and traditional images alike. There is no difference when it comes to that. So in this case, um, I'm just adding some more details to the characters, making sure that uh, the anatomy is correct, certain areas, key areas um, are showing up well enough. Uh, I did notice at this stage that it didn't look like it was actual muscle that was showing through. Uh, so for this reason I had to go in with the soft brush once again and just uh, add some more lines so that it showed a little bit more that it was actually um, muscle fibers that you were seeing on the side. Uh, the stitches do help emphasize that, but once again, unless you actually know what's going on, you may not realize that too. I kept the hands really simple in this case. Uh, they're pretty much just normal hands. The only thing I did was elongate the fingernails. Uh, I don't normally do that, but in this case, uh, I definitely wanted to try it out. I've seen on a couple of different websites, uh, a couple artists do that. And although I draw claws, I don't normally draw elongated fingernails, so I did want to try it out on this drawing. Now for those chains, I did use a specialty brush for that. Uh, they do cut down a lot of time. I have, though, in, done in the past uh, the chains manually. Uh, you have a little bit more control when you're doing the chains manually. Um, but no matter what you do, the moment you include chains, uh, in a drawing, you are pretty much guaranteed to spend more time on your drawing. Because uh, although I have that as a basic template, and that allows me to mask out that entire area all at once and then add the detail, I still have to add that detail. Because although the silhouette looks like chains, the silhouette still looks flat. So in order, in order to add a three-dimensional look to it, I have to manually go in and add the highlights and the shadows. And it takes normally a couple passes before you can get something that's satisfactory. Uh, if I was doing this all by hand, normally you can paint it in such a way so that you can do it as you go. You could also, uh, when you're doing chains, 
or anything similar to this, you could just make uh, two template ones and then just move them as you will, uh, rotate them and skew them to fit the perspective that you want. That is another method. Uh, it's just easier for me to use the brush, so I do use the, the brush once again. Uh, these brushes that I'm using are actually uh, they're actually free online. Uh, if you go to, uh, I believe it's uh, theartofdarken.com or something similar to that, uh, he actually has a couple of YouTube videos too. I actually just used his brushes. His brushes are really well designed. They're simple. Um, but overall, I, I probably only use two specialty brushes that he actually tailored to his drawings. Um, other than that, I just use the default brushes in general. Now, uh, you see me in the past use uh, textures and um, other such things to cut down the drawing time for uh, the perspective, especially when drawing certain things on the floor or uh, blocks and stuff. Now, in this case, I wanted to show you that you can still do this paint this all in traditionally or digitally. Um, it makes no difference how you do it. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to use an image that you found online. The nice thing about not doing that is that you don't have to worry about it being copyright infringement uh, because you are technically taking somebody else's photo uh, to cut down your work. And unless you do a lot of editing, that could be called, that could, that is still considered plagiarizing. Um, so if you are using textures in general, I do recommend that you. Uh, take your own photos of uh, bricks, cobblestone, uh, whatever textures you want uh, because you won't have to worry about copyright infringement if you do so. Now in this case uh, I don't have to worry about that at all because I didn't use any textures. Everything was fully painted uh, in, so in this case I don't have to worry about that. Now because the overall theme is very dark um, but I did want the character to pop still. Uh, the background has very dark colors to it. There's a lot of shadow. There's really only one light source, uh, which is pretty much shining on him, which is allowing you to see the character. Uh, all that I do take into consideration when I'm drawing uh, to make sure that it reads correctly. Uh, also, one thing that you see me do fairly often is I'm currently working on the pillar or that part of the wall. Uh, I did notice at that point that the perspective was incorrect so I had to fix the perspective on, at least on the bottom of that pillar to make sure it matched with uh, the other part of the wall. Now just to start off with some basic colors I just slapped in a basic color once again, uh, once again I have just the basic default colors in my palette. Um, these are the default ones that come with Photoshop. I didn't make any changes to that. Uh, and once I put a basic coat on there, I started adding some additional colors to help bring out certain areas as well. To make sure that uh, it shows that it's actual muscle tissue, I did add that bright red in there as well. Uh, so I hope you guys liked this video. Um, this was a really fun piece. I might draw some more gore later on. So I hope you enjoyed this and take care.